Hello, uh, in this particular chapter we are going to discuss about the different types of functional coatings, what we are adapting for the uh, betterment of the surface engineering. So, before going to start we have to know that what are the different types of functional coatings and maybe the what is the def, uh, definitions of these functional coatings by which uh, we are changing the material properties. The term functional coatings describe systems other than the classical properties of a coating maybe decorations or protections. So, sometimes we are doing some kind of coatings for the ornamental purpose. So, simple we are changing the outside aesthetic properties of that particular material. So, that it can maybe looks good, maybe it can glitters and sometimes we are uh, putting some kind of coatings for the safety purposes. So, that it can uh, direct not directly interact with the environment or maybe that water moisture water molecules or maybe the moisture inside the environment or maybe some kind of acidic or maybe that basic conditions. But here uh, just to um, uh, widely spread uh, here we are doing some kind of coatings which is more than this kind of coatings or maybe the techniques. First one is that there are several types of uh, functional coatings are available by which we can change the material properties like easy to clean, anti graffiti properties, self cleaning, anti fouling properties, antibacterial application, soft fill. But these all types of coatings will come into our future slides or maybe in our future lecture. So, here what is the expectations from this kind of functional coatings actually what we want why we are doing this kind of coatings. So, first is called the durability then is the reproducibility, environmental friendliness, easy applications and cost effectiveness, easy application and cost effectiveness. So, these all are the five properties um, rather we can say that these all are the main five properties for which we are doing this kind of functional coatings. But if we go for uh, if we see that this kind of functional coatings having numerous advantages or maybe the applications. So, functional coating come up with additional functionality this functionality depend upon the actual applications of a coated substrate. So, these all are the applications by which we can uh, we can do this kind of functional coatings. So, here we are uh, trying to show you the different properties and for getting this kind of properties what type of material we can take or maybe what kind of nanomaterials we can take for doing this kind of functional coatings. So, if we want to increase the antimicrobial properties of our materials we can take the copper oxide, titanium dioxide, zinc oxide materials or maybe the nanomaterials. If we want to increase the gas barrier properties we can use several types of nanoclays. Nanoclays is nothing but the clays into the nano form. Then we are increasing if we are trying to increase the corrosion properties we can use different kind of nanoclays or maybe the bohemite. Electrical conductivity and static charge dissipations we can use the indium tin oxides then antimony doped tin oxide or maybe the tin oxide. Then fire retardant materials we can use some kind of nanoclays nanoparticles IR absorption reflections we can use ITO, ATO, TiO2, indium oxide. Magnetic properties we can use the Fe2O3. Mechanical scratch resistance we can use Al2O3, SiO2, zirconia oxide, photocatalysis self cleaning properties TiO2, zinc oxide, UV stability we can use TiO2, zinc oxide, Ba, barium sulphate or maybe that CeO2. So, there are several types of materials from this particular chart we can see that if we use this kind of materials. So, this kind of properties may be changed for that particular substrate or maybe that materials. So, now we are going to discuss one by one. First one is called the nanostructure thin films as functional coatings. So, nanostructure thin films are one of the highly exploiting research areas particularly in applications such as photovoltaics, photocatalysis and the sensor technologies. So, these all are the applications where we can use this kind of materials like photovoltaics properties, by photocatalysis some sensor applications for some devices we can change this kind of or maybe we can get this kind of properties. So, highly tuned thin films in terms of thickness, crystallinity, porosity and optical properties can be fabricated on different substrates using the soil gel method chemical solution depositant method, electrochemical itching along with other conventional methods such as CVD, chemical vapor deposition process, physical vapor deposition process. So, these all are the process will come into detail in our later slides. 
So, here this one is the example. So, we here we are taking a substrate of AIN on which we are giving a layer by layer techniques of different materials or uh, uh, coatings of different materials like titanium dioxide, then silicon dioxide like this. And from here you can see that what is the size of that particular layer into micrometer. So, coating consisting of 3 uh, TiO2 and 2 SiO2 nano rod layers. So, it is a 1, 2 and 3, these 3 combined of TiO2 but having different layers, then we are using the silicon dioxide having 2 different layers. Next is we are talking about the photoactive self cleaning fibers. This is also one kind of technology by which we can change the material properties. How we are doing it? The cotton fibers can be treated with colloid where a thin film is formed on fiber surface through a conventional coating process. With the use of cell cleaning clothing, contamination of rivers and streams caused by effluent from the laundry process can be reduced. Depleting natural resources can also be saved through reducing the use of detergent and water. So, simple we are using some kind of materials onto the top of the fibers, so that the dirt particle or maybe the dust particle will not deposit it onto our shirts or maybe onto our uh, uh, clothes, so that we no need to clean that clothes for a longer time. So, here simply when these dark particles is coming, the light, horse, light sources is coming, then when the light is coming, they are reacting with the coating materials onto the cloth and then automatically they are destroying. So, that it is a self cleaning uh, fibers generally we are adapting for our clothes. Next is that TiO2 thin films for solar cells and water splitting. So, due to the depleting and polluting state of fossil fuels, researchers are in search for alternative energy source that are economic and eco friendly. It is projected that thin film technology will play an increasingly important role in the near future for development of alternative energies, particularly the photovoltaics applications. So, here generally we are using the TiO2 generally we know that TiO2 can be obtained into different form. So, one particular form of the TiO2 we can use for the photovoltaic operations or maybe the solar cells because it is one kind of renewable energy. So, by which uh, that we can generate the electricity from directly from the sunlight without uh, getting any kind of external sources or maybe that external energy sources. Next, hydrogen generation by water splitting is another promising tool for clean fuel production by using the solar energy. So, we are nowadays uh, high end research is going on for the hydrogen storage and the hydrogen production. So, this hydrogen is generally we are using for the water splitting so that we can get the energy and that energy we can use for our electrical purposes. The mostly exploited form of nanocrystalline titanium dioxide mediated photocatalytic water splitting is a suspended form of thin film technology which has get distribution to this field. So, this is the another advantage of using this kind of functional coatings by which we can change the material properties and we can use this kind of materials for different aspects. Next, we are using the titanium dioxide thin film for the water treatment. So, generally in this particular case, the anatase form of the t titanium dioxide we are using. So, we are using this titanium dioxide, we are putting into some dirty water. So, in which we are using certain kind of UV source or maybe the UV light by which this titanium dioxide is activated. And in that titanium dioxide, some uh, when it is getting the ions, then directly uh, through these excited electrons, the oxygen of this titanium dioxide is getting activated, then they are trapping the impurity inside the water. Then after that simply we are cleaning those water or maybe we are filtering those water, so that the drap particles or maybe the dust particles will come out from the water and we can get the pure water in the form of a foam, uh, in, the, uh, in the form of a drinking water or maybe some other treatment. So, anodized TiO2 appears efficient photocatalyst in various environmental applications due to following reasons. Generate hydroxyl radicals, non-toxic, chemically inert and low cost, high photoactivity, mechanical stability, photosensitive in ultraviolet region. Nanostructured anodized anodized in the form of powder suspension has extremely used in the water treatment. So, as I already described that we are using this kind of titanium dioxide powder inside the water to trap 
the impurities from the water itself. Next, we are applying this kind of porous silicons for different applications. So, here the applications are like this, large surface area and chemically tunable surface have made porous silicon promising host for various materials that alter the optical and electrical properties for novel applications such as photocatalysis, batteries and optical devices. So, just for the electronic devices or maybe some kind of optical properties, we are using this kind of materials. Using porous silicon as a carrier for TiO2 nanoparticles is a potential way to improve the photocatalytic properties of TiO2 due to the large surface area of the porous silicon and also easier way to collect and separate photocatalyst particles after finishing the missions. So, here we are using several types of materials like spherical shaped nanostructures mesoporous silicon for the drug carriers, surface multifunctionalization with different biological like grains and polymers, drug delivery to allow travel through the bloodstream and release the therapeutic compounds in the vicinity of the tumor sites and the multimodal imaging. So, from that particular things we can understand that we are using this kind of materials for the biomedical applications like targeted drug, drug delivery. Something that I am having some tumor in my hand or maybe in somewhere else. So, when we are putting this kind of materials that materials directly go to the affected zone and it will heal those uh, uh, tumors or maybe some kind of unwanted things inside our body. It will not affect we, uh, any good sites in our body itself. So, here we are showing that different types of modifications by which we can do. So, like some kind of PSI nanoparticles for the drug peptide loading, then we are doing the surface multifunctionalizations, dark peptide uh, delivery. So, for the blood vessels, so directly it will go to the affected site and it is reacting. Then some multimodal imaging, it is in the in vivo conditions, it is into the in vitro conditions or maybe the in vitro conditions. So, there are several types of applications for this kind of nano uh, functional coatings. Next, we are discussing about the nanocomposite coatings for controlling UV, IR and other radiations. So, just we are protecting our materials from this kind of uh, uh, ultraviolet ray or maybe that uh, infrared or maybe some other radiations process. So, prolonged exposure to UV radiations causes degradation of coating flames which can be minimized by coating. UV degradation is a critical issue for automobile and aircraft coatings. Nano size oxides such as titanium dioxide, zinc oxide and the CE oxide have been shown to be good UV absorbers that can provide long term protection for various substances. Controlling the effects of IR waves is another highly desired characteristic of coatings in a number of applications. IR reflective layer of silver or gold metal on titanium dioxide, CEO2 and zinc oxide deposited through physical vapor deposition is an example to prevent the oxidation of the substrate. So, these all are the different applications, different materials by which we can adapt and we can change the material properties. So, here is an example where UV protective clear coating containing inorganic nanoparticles. So, you we are absorbing nanoparticles, then we are using some kind of organic binders, then through that binders we are putting that coating onto the substrate itself, so that it is making some UV light sensitive substrates which can attract the UV light. Next, we are using some kind of conductive coatings. So, from the name itself we can understand that just to change the whole materials by changing the outer surface of that materials, we are making that materials from non-conductive to conductive one. So, pure silver, pure copper and mixed copper silver bimetallic nanostructured flames are some of the materials used as a conductive coatings. So, conductive coatings have potential applications in partial potential have potential applications in printed electronics, catalysis, antibacterial coating and heat transfer fluids. Conductive surfaces are generally fabricated using top down technologies such as vapor depositions, lithography and high temperature reducing jet. In that particular case actually we need the fillers which is having highly conductive, but without changing the total material properties just giving a coating onto that surface, we can change the material properties from the non-conductive to the conductive one. Here we are giving some kind of examples like we are having that copper materials on top of that we are giving a coating of the silver one. So, here the copper is the core and silver as a cell material, it is the high resolution transmission electroscopy microscope figure. 
So, in that HRTM imaging of copper silver bimetallic particles obtained from precursors with 442.1 percent of silver and rest is the 57.98 percent of copper. First one is that image of core copper cell silver particle, it is a schematic illustrations. B is nothing but the core copper and shell is the cephal morphology seen in highly resolution 10 micrograph. C is nothing but the copper and bimetallic particle with a silver as cell showing that lattice spring spacing of 2.35 plus minus 0.01 angstrom. And last one is that a polycrystalline nanoparticle of the 10 nanometer size by which just we are proving that silver is uh, having a very good affinity and a good coating thickness onto the copper particles. Then next one we are talking about the biocompatible coatings. So, here the nanostructured biocompatible surface can help to interface living cells by reducing time required for adherence which may find application in developing coatings for the implants. So, generally we this type of materials we are using for the biomedical implants other may be, may be some kind of knee replacement, may be some kind of uh, uh, elbow replacement. So, where we are using some kind of intermetallic materials or maybe some kind of metalling materials and by coating this kind of materials which can be easily used or maybe can be easily inserted into, into our body and our body can readily accept this kind of implants. So, here is the figure shows the growth behavior of cell on zirconium oxide and carbon nitrate samples. Osteoblasts of zirconium oxide films display homogeneous and dense cell population due to a fast and pronounced cell growth. So, here we are using some kind of zirconia oxide based materials or maybe that zirconia copper nitride based surfaces where we from, from this particular FSM image we have shown that cell has been grown onto this kind of substrate or maybe this kind of materials. That means that our body is ex, uh, accepting this kind of materials as an implant. So, in future if we want to make any kind of implants, we can use this kind of materials. Then we are coming to the summary of this particular lecture is that we have summarized that uh, what are the functional coatings. In these particular topics we have discussed that what is the definition of functional coatings, what are the advantages and different types of functional coatings, why we are using this kind of functional coatings, effect of different kind of nano uh, particulates on properties of coating materials has been studied in this particular lecture. Different nanostructure films are discussed in details and their functional coatings are elaborated with their application in various fields. Surface with nanostructure coatings have promising applications in biomedical. We have described in detail electrical thermal conductivity that it can enhance the electrical and thermal properties of those kind of materials. Controlling of the UV, IR and other radiation. So, we can increase or decrease the acceptance of UV light or maybe that reflection of that UV light from that substrate itself. Though we have discussed several applications, but these all are the applications are very few. There are n number of applications by which we can, for which we can do this kind of functional coatings. Thank you.